Welcome to our Electron Line. In our next video here, we're going to now turn things around. We're going to have the observer moving towards the source. And again, we're trying to find the equation where we're relating the observed frequency to the source frequency. Again, here, let's first take a look at the picture and see what's happening. In this case, we have the source that's stationary, which is not moving, putting out a sound that has a particular frequency, let's call the source frequency, and a particular wavelength. So you can see that a wave goes out, and then another wave goes out, another wave goes out at a particular frequency. Therefore, we have a period, a certain amount of time between the waves. But the observer is moving towards the source, so before the wave can get to the point, before the next wave is sent, the observer will have moved some distance, so will actually meet the wave sooner than it would have if the observer had stayed in place. So this is now going to become the observed wavelength, and there's the difference in the wavelength between the, the wavelength of the source and the observed wavelength. So how do we find an equation relating the observed frequency to the source frequency? Well, first of all, we need to try to define this distance right here. So the distance, delta wavelength, is going to be equal to, now let's look at the equation here, we know that distance equals velocity times time. So how are we going to come up with an equation for the difference in the wavelength? Well, it's going to equal the velocity of the observer, because the observer is moving towards the sound, so velocity of the observer, times the time that it took for the observer to go from there to there. Well, that's actually the observed period, not the period of the source, but the observed period by the observer. So we'll write this as the period observed. And of course, we know the relationship between the frequency and the period, so therefore this could be written as the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency observed. Now we can use that in the equation where we're relating the wavelength of the source and the wavelength observed. We can say that the wavelength observed is equal to the wavelength of the source minus the difference in those two, the delta lambda, which we defined right here. So we cannot make the substitution. So we have the wavelength observed is equal to the wavelength of the source minus the ratio of the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency observed. Now we're going to rewrite this one as well. Going to our wave equation here, and since we have the wavelength observed, we can write that as the velocity of sound in air divided by the frequency observed. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So velocity of sound in air divided by the frequency observed is equal to lambda of the source minus the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency observed. <clears throat> now, it looks like what we want to do is put both of these on the same side of the equation. So let's do that. So we have the velocity plus the velocity observed. When we move this to the other side, it becomes positive, all over the same denominator of the frequency observed. And that equals the wavelength of the source on the right side of the equation. And then we're going to make another substitution. Coming up here, we can see that the wavelength of the source can be written as the velocity of sound and air divided by the frequency of the source. So let's move it up here. And on the left side, we had velocity of sound and air plus the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency of the observer. And that's going to be equal to lambda sub s, which can be written as the velocity of sound in air, divided by the frequency of the source. And now we have both the frequency of the observer and the frequency of the source in the same equation, so I can make this relationship. Again, since I'm looking for frequency observed, I'm going to flip the equation over. So we have the frequency observed divided by velocity of sound in air plus the velocity of the observer is equal to, flip that over, frequency of the source divided by velocity of sound in air. And finally, I can now solve that for the frequency of the observer. So we have the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times v plus v of the observer divided by velocity of sound in air. And there's the equation we were looking for, and this is, of course, where the observer observer is moving 
this is important, towards the source. The reason it's better that we express it in terms of moving towards or away from the source is because I could have, for example, had this, had this drawing completely turned around, and so here the observer is moving in a negative direction, then the observer would be moving in a positive direction, and, it's, and you would get the exact same result. So it's better to talk about it in terms of moving towards the source or towards the observer, whatever it is. And so here we can see that if the observer is moving towards the source, well, then we expect to hear a higher frequency, and you can see here that the sum of these two is greater than the denominator, which means a fraction greater than one, which gives us a larger frequency observed. Now, what if the observer was moving in the opposite direction from moving towards the source, making this a negative VO, then the numerator would be smaller than the denominator, the fraction would be less than one, and the frequency observed would be less than the frequency of the source, and that's the case when the observer is moving away from the source. So it's better to talk about moving towards and away from the source than talking about positive and negative velocities. That doesn't work very well in this particular case. So the way the drawing was set up, moving towards the source, that is the equation of the observed frequency in terms of the frequency of the source when the observer is moving towards the source. And that's how it's done.